Hi, in this tutorial I want to talk about uh, Lumberyard Gems and see if we can make a, a cruise uh, or heat seeking missile that will launch from these battleships. So let's do that now. Um, first of all, there is a tutorial on the official um, Lumberyard tutorial set about how to start programming with Gems. I'd highly recommend going through that one. Um, so we'll quickly review the ideas there first. Um, you basically go to your installation directory and launch the batch file, the Lumberyard Launcher batch file. Uh, go to the Summary tab, click on Configure Project. Um, I'm working in the Samples project, so select that. Set that as default if you haven't already. And click on Enable Packages. Uh, in the official tutorial, it tells you to now create a gem, a new gem. Uh, I think I'd like to maybe just show you what happens if you select some of the other gems which are uh, provided. So if you click on snow and rain, for example, um, and maybe some others, uh, then save that. And in order to uh, compile that, you need to go to a command line. So type CMD and open a, a command prompt. Uh, go to your to change this here to the right keyboard settings. So go to your um, Lumberyard installation directory and go to the dev folder and then type um, it's lumber underline waf dot exe. It's an application uh, that allows you to configure your, your uh, settings. So configure. Uh, that's explained in the uh, tutorial. So run that. And now go to your uh, dev solutions folder and start the um, Lumberyard SDK solution in Visual Studio. And you should see that under the gems folder, you now have uh, projects for each of the gems which you enabled. Um, and it's a really good idea to look inside these and check out the code. Uh, you won't see a project here for all of the uh, gems on the um, in here. Uh, it's because they don't all require uh, code. Some of them just rely on Lua, for example. Uh, but for example, the snow gem relies on um, C++ code changes. So if you want to learn how to work with gems, a good way is to, is to look at the examples. Um, so let's actually, uh, you need to compile that. So build solution. And then you need to uh, check it out. Okay, so I'll go into uh, my sea battle level and I have a bit of terrain here. Um, so let's check out, you click on uh, entity in the roll up bar and then under environment, you should see your rain and snow um, gems. And I just dragged in the rain uh, example there. So we down a bit closer. And it's a really nice effect. That's really well done. And the great thing is having all the source code, you can really see you know, how these things were done. Fantastic. Uh, you can play around with the parameters here um, as you like. I'll just uh, undo that. Um, and let's add in uh, 
snow as an example. So again, great effect. There's the snow. Hope you can see it. It might be difficult with the starry night sky. Um, but again, you can change parameters here. Like for example, the radius will, uh, you know, impact how how uh, how much of the terrain is affected by this effect. And I think the brightness, yeah, the brightness will show the snow a bit more clearly, and so on. Um, the snowflake size. Now, let's see if we can convert the snow into a, a cruise missile. That sounds like a weird idea, but we learn a lot by doing so. Uh, we learn a lot about uh, lumberyard gems. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to code and we're going to change the code for the snow to make it into a uh, cruise missile which launches from one ship and attacks uh, a different ship. So let's try that now. So we go out of the game here, out of the editor. I won't save the changes. Okay, so back in the in the code, just uh, it's a, it's a good idea to again browse through what's provided. Um, it's uh, essentially four files, two uh, C++ files, and the corresponding header files and there isn't much to it um, and so what i did was i said um what would i need to change here to turn this from a snow effect into a uh, an entity which launches from a ship and so you don't need a lot of stuff here that relates to snow obviously this is the, the stuff where, where snow is then uh, set up um, now I'm not going to bore you by going through all the, the details of the changes I made. I'll, I'll show you the result. To do that, I'll just exit out of Visual Studio, um, go into the Dev Gems folder, and then under Snow Code, um, I'll just show you the changes I made in a second. So I had saved the changes under under a directory called source new, and the originals are under source OE original. So um, now we'll uh, launch Visual Studio again. And I'll just show you the, uh, the changed files, and I'll show you where the changes are. and. Okay, so let me see. Uh, in the Snow Gem CPP uh, file, I changed the script file to be uh, an empty uh, string. In other words, I don't have a Lua file associated with this uh, entity. Um, and I removed the code that was related to. Uh, to uh, creating snow here as well. So this is pretty pretty, uh, pretty straightforward, not much going on in there. Um, so it, again, the, the only real change here was removing the uh, Lua script file name. And then over in snow.ctp, um, you know, I'm just commenting out stuff that relates to creating snow. And instead, uh, putting in code that relates to launching an entity. So here we have, for example, um, familiar code from the previous tutorials um, about you know loading a geometry into the entity, um, physicalizing the entity, and um, applying a velocity. So if you looked at my uh, tutorials uh, two and three on the um, Simple Tutor series, you'll see what that means and. Uh, and how that works and then we just add a, a, a trail effect at the end as well um let's see what else we have in here in the update function um i am 
yeah i'm updating the velocity um such that it doesn't go directly to the target but follows a curved path so um let me uh try to explain this here so we have um the position of the projectile so the projectile is the current entity get entity is used for that uh, we get its, its position uh, and we get we, well I have a default target position here but I also have um, I also try to look for an entity in the scene called target uh, and we'll see where that is later in a, in a second it's just that if there isn't a target uh, entity in the scene it, it defaults to this target position um, so if it finds the target uh, entity called target then we store that position in target position um, if the projectile is within a certain distance of the target we create an explosion and we hide the uh, the missile let me make that a bit closer um, so if it's within 10 units of the uh, of the target then we get this explosion effect uh, and this is actually then where um, I update the velocity of the uh, missile um, as it moves along its path. Um, it's just a bit of maths, which basically says that uh, you take the current velocity and you add to it a correction, um, which is in the direction of the target, um, divided by some factor. Uh, and that factor determines how curved the path will be. And I also change that curvature over time. So it launches from a ship uh, vertically uh, and starts to curve over towards the target. And as it gets closer to the target, it becomes more, um, uh, it starts to move more directly towards the target. So you can have great fun actually playing with these parameters to, to see the, the various effects. Um, and then we update the, uh, the velocity. Um, and I've just commented out some of the original code here so you can see, you can see that uh, this was really, you know, uh, I'm looking at the update function and put in some code for moving our, our cruise missile. Um, the other change I made was in the, let's see what else we have. Yeah, so this is snow code, don't need that. Don't need the reset function. Um, and oh yeah, I've included some uh, header files that are needed for the effects uh, below. Um, got a couple of uh, protected uh, variables that we need, uh, so they'll, they'll change as well how the uh, the cruise missile flies. Um, now to launch these, you can just drag them into the scene from the roll-up bar or you can uh, launch them from a key press or from a right mouse button click as you wish. Um, here I made a small change in the, let's see, in the um, actor um, code. So before we had some, some code here, which, which is called when we press the left mouse button. And here um, I just uh, abused the jump, uh, the space bar, which is linked to the, the string jump. Um, but of course we could use our action map uh, XML file to, to uh, link this to any other key as we wish. Um, and here we, we basically say, I want to launch from a certain position. I just know that that's the position of the uh, one of the ships the scene but you could you could set this to be uh, any position or some um, sort of launch position entity and then um, you spawn the uh, the uh, the cruise missile so let's have a look at what that uh, looks like I'll, I'll um, build it first We start our uh, open up our level.
Well, what, what I can do is I can I can drag. Um, oh, default uh, snow. I, I'll drag an example into the scene, and you should see that once I uh, uh, bring it into the scene, it'll take off vertically and uh, head for head for one of the, um, the ships where I placed the target. So let me show you what I mean by that. This here is a not that one uh, I hope you can see the, the text there that that there is uh, a target um, but how I made that was simply come in here to entity in the physics I dragged in a basic entity and positioned it on the chip um, and then uh, labeled this called it a uh, target so our code is looking for the target I'll put that back on the ship that's where the uh, the missile will, will aim for. So if I go back over to the land and bring in snow, it should take off and uh, aim for. Let me bring in a few. Bring in a few examples here. There's two, and there's another one. Okay, so we've got three cruise missiles called Snow, a bit wacky, I know. And if I start the game, hopefully they should launch. There they are. It's hard to see them, they're a bit far away, but they're launching and they should aim for or go for the, uh, the target, which is the ship, where we put the target uh, entity. Yeah, when they're within a certain distance, then they um, explode. So now, if I press the space bar, we should see the cruise missiles launching from this ship uh, here in front of us. I press the space bar now. And there we go. There is one launching. And it follows a, a traje trajectory which is curved towards the, um, the other ship. And if I launch two or three in a row, now obviously the the the, uh, the default sphere model isn't very convincing for this effect, uh, but uh, you can change that easily. Okay, so I'll just launch a few more, and obviously with different mouse presses and different logic you can launch from different places towards different targets and so on uh, with different trajectories um, so there's a gem it was snow and now it's the cruise missile um, in the next tutorial we'll, we'll create a new gem and set it up to be uh, uh, a missile so in this one we're just showing that uh, you can have a gem uh, behave like that um, in the next tutorial we'll, we'll, we'll create a fresh gem, a new one, and uh, show that we can, we can add the code from scratch. Okay, I hope that helps. Uh, thanks. Bye.